guys, it's me, the Witch of the Wilderness, and this is a redo of my Book of Shadows video. So this is basically just an improvement of that video. Um, it's just all the things that you can include in your Book of Shadows. So as for what a Book of Shadows is, it is a witch's spell book, basically. It's a book where you can write down all your spells, all your information. It's basically like your very own guidebook for how to be a witch with the information that you find out. You write it in the book and you can keep going back to it for reference. You can, can read it on a night to learn new things. There's so many things that you can put in a book of shadows. So a book of shadows is something that is obviously really personal to you. There is no right and no wrong way. You can type it up on your phone, on your computer. You can handwrite it in a, a notebook on plain paper. You can have more than one. I mean, it could just be a notebook that you like from a shop and you wish to use it, that's fine. So, as for things that you can put in a Book of Shadows, the list is exhaustive. However, I'm going to say a few of the things that I've got in my Book of Shadows, which is firstly, I have a blessing to protect my Book of Shadows. And this is written on the very first page. Then after that I have the Wiccan Read, the short version and the full version are both written down in my Book of Shadows. I also have the phases of the moon, so like the waning, waxing, the new moon, the full moon, gibbous. They all have different properties which you can harness when you do magic and things like that, rituals that are done on a full moon may not work as well as a ritual done on a stage of the moon that suits it kind of thing. There's also casting and closing a circle. I do have a video on that. I may be redoing the video for that soon. I'm not sure yet. But basically, before you attempt any magic or any spell work, I would recommend that you research both casting and closing a circle as this will offer you protection in case you mess the spell up. So if you're a beginner witch or you're just dabbling or you know you just want a little extra bit of protection, then always cast and close your circles. There's also deities, so Cernanos, Loki, you know, there, there are hundreds. There's the Egyptian gods and goddesses, the Greek gods and goddesses, the Celtic gods and goddesses. There are hundreds and they might not all be deities that you would be interested in working alongside. So if a deity does call out to you, I would recommend doing as much research as you can on that deity and how to work with them and leave offerings and blessings for them. So, I would recommend that being another thing that goes into your Book of Shadows. Crystals that are water soluble, ones that are safe to put in water, ones that are not. Their properties, on top of this, how to charge and cleanse your crystals. You could have things like full moon chants. You could have candle magic, where you write down the properties of each candle's colour and the substitutions so if you don't have a colour candle for that spell then you could just use a white one but obviously it's important to know you could also use herbs so the properties of herbs and how they can be used in cooking kitchen witchery spells things like that offerings on top of that if you're a divination witch um, you could also write out spreads that work for you, meanings of the cards that you're struggling with. 
if you have a crystal ball methods in which you gaze and open your third eye and also maybe write down what you see because the book of shadows is nothing more than a journal in which you can document sort of almost how you are progressing along your path you could also write down useful information like how to dry herbs what moon water is the properties of the different types of water so storm water snow water rain water sea water river water all things like that the elements as well that's very 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 important in wicca is the elements and how you use them because the elements are also linked in with calling the quarters when you cast a circle or the watchtowers depending on which way you prefer to cast a circle if you do cast a circle you could also do rune stones and their meaning and you could also write down the sabbats the lesser sabbats and the greater sabbats so like Samhain, Lammas, Beltane, you know, they all have a key moment of the year which they mark the quarter days and the cross quarter days and it's important to know and understand why pagans, Wiccan witches celebrate those days and why we find them so important to do certain rituals like a dump supper on Samhain or baking bread with Lammas, you know, it all links in to how you can apply your your craft and your practice to your everyday life and this is something else that your Book of Shadows will help you with. You could put down properties of essential oils, you know, that's also good for ritual baths and things like that, for self-care and self-love. You could also do things like writing down what spells you've done. You could also, if you're into Reiki and things like that, you could also write down your chakras, where they are positioned in the body, what their attributes and correspondences are, which crystals go with them, which essential oils goes with that chakra, it all links in. If you're into the zodiacs, you could put your you know, planetary alignment chart, you could work it all out, your rising sun and rising moon, you could have a page just designated to your zodiac. There is literally nothing that you can't really put in a book of shadows. If you find it useful to your craft, then I think it deserves a place in there. It doesn't have to be written neatly. Obviously, some people say, oh, my handwriting's awful, it's going to look awful, or I'm not very arty. But at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be some great work of art. I mean, me personally, I love doing all the elaborate designs and the calligraphies. That's just something that I like to do and I enjoy doing. It's not because it has to be done that specific way and I just feel like when you start out looking into wicca or witchcraft and you hear talk about grimoires and book of shadows it can be off-putting to start one you don't know what to do what to put in it you don't know what the expectations I guess are but there isn't any expectations the book of shadows many witches believe should be for your eyes only there used to be the Thaban script in the olden days which witches used to write their secret spells and tomes out to keep them hidden from the church for fear of punishment so a book of shadows has always been something personal to you it's not something that's meant to be bandied about and shared I mean, obviously, if you're in a coven and you feel comfortable with the witches or Wiccans or people that you're, you know, showing it to, then I'm not saying you can't show your Book of Shadows, but personally, I I think it's more 
something for your eyes only, something for you to work on, if that makes sense. So, if you know which path of Wicca or witchcraft you wish to follow, if you are following the path of a cottage witch, a green witch, you know, it, a divination witch, it can all affect the type of information that you wish to store in your book of shadows. So the first step to creating a book of shadows is to think about what information you need to put in it. You can also use a ring binder um, with plastic wallets or just a hole punch and that allows rearranging of the pages. So if you don't wish to particularly put it in any type of order when you start, then I think that would be the best option because it does allow for categorization of the pages to allow accessing your information easier. But yeah, a book of shadows is something that is just for you to write down things that you didn't know before, that you want to learn about, you know, how to, how to reverse a hex, how to cleanse your crystals, the properties of sage, the correspondences of the planets. There's loads, loads of things that you can put in. Uh, there's no pressure to learn about a particular thing. Uh, obviously, things like casting and closing a circle and the sabbats, I would say for me, were, and the elements were the first things that I put in my book of shadows after the blessing and stuff like that. But that's only because I feel that Wicca and witchcraft revolve so heavily about that that it just felt right to put it right at the beginning. But yeah, there literally is no right and no wrong way to do a Book of Shadows. It's just all your personal preference. So if you're thinking about writing a Book of Shadows, if it would help and take notes from what I'm saying, maybe write them down in your, to put in a Book of Shadows later, you know, that's why my videos are here. They're here to help beginner witches or people who are interested in learning Wicca and witchcraft just gain a bit more knowledge about the craft because not everyone learns by reading and sometimes the idea of learning about a way of life or a path or you know something that you aren't entirely familiar with from a book that you can't really interact with or I don't know. I personally, I learnt a lot of... A lot of my information was from books, but at the same time, a lot is stuff that I've talked about or heard about. So, anyway, enough of my rambling. My videos are there to help anyone who might need them, and yeah, that's another quick video all about Books of Shadows and the type of stuff that you can put in them. I hope you found it useful and you didn't think it was me just waffling on. Um, but yeah, I will see you all in the next video. Bye!